What's up, my fellow duck collectors, and welcome to Surveying Collectibles. Disclaimer, the voiceover for this video was created using AI software, but it is still mimicking my own voice. In this video, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a while and give you guys a full update on my current collection, which consists of mostly Hasbro, Mattel, McFarlane Toys, NECA, and Storm collectibles. Among those brands, I collect a wide variety of franchises such as DC Comics, WWE, Marvel, Mortal Kombat, Power Rangers, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and more. My update video presentation is less of a walkthrough or tour, and more of a series of photos while I explain my display preferences. Also, be sure to stick around to the end to see some things that I don't show off very often. If this is your first time on my channel, hi, my name is Seville, and here I'd like to discuss action figures and other collectibles based on my favorite movies, TV shows, and video games. If you find this video enjoyable or informative, please give me a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Uh, starting with Hasbro. The main lines I collect are Marvel Legends and Power Rangers Lightning Collection. I also dabble in the Ghostbusters Plasma series, along with the Star Wars Black series. For a long time, my Marvel collection was primarily all from the MCU. But now, since they've began the multiverse saga, I have gone back and gotten some characters that would be considered legacy. Characters from the Fox and Sony eras. I am still a bit OCD when it comes to my organization, so I do keep the shelves split into separate categories. My top shelf is primarily title heroes from the Infinity, a saga like the Avengers themselves, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and a few others that could be considered main characters. The middle shelf is what I consider to be secondary characters like Odin, Yandu, Quicksilver, and the Eternals. I also have a few incomplete build-of-figures that I still need to get the remaining parts for. Then on the bottom shelf, I have the villains, Thanos himself, Hela, Kingpin, Red Skull, Mysterio, just about all of them. I've admitted fallen a bit behind on Marvel since the arrival of plastic-free packaging because that made me very wary of purchasing figures that I could not see considering the quality control and theft issues that it led to. Now working my way up the narrow tower of shelves. On the bottom, I have the Foxverse characters like X-Men. I can't wait to add the yellow suit. Hugh Jackman from Deadpool and Wolverine along with Colossus. Next up are the Sony Spider-Man characters. I still need to get the recent Green Goblin figure, plus the new Carnage figure to put alongside the Tom Hardy Venom. On the next shelf, I have the Netflix characters like Daredevil and Punisher. I can't wait to see how these characters are fully integrated into the MCU. Finally, my last Marvel shelf is for who it seems like will be a part of the new Avengers, such as the updated Spider-Man, She-Hulk, and Falcon as the new Captain America. Now it's time to move on to the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. I do still have some Bandai Legacy stuff mixed in, like Tommy's Green White Morpher, plus the Zords. I never got around to even trying the Zap Megazord. As far as the figures themselves go, they're all Lightning Collection. Much like with Marvel Legends, the Lightning Collection became less of a priority to me with the advent of plastic-free packaging, but I do still have most of what's available. I'm not a 100% completionist, because I don't keep most Ray releases, but I'm very close to having one of each character. Back to my prop shelf at the top really quick. I have kinda regretted selling off my legacy. More forever since it was really used as the actual morphers in the one sand. Always special. I might have to hunt it back down one day along with the Ninjetti. Power coins just to have both versions on my shelves. Uh, similarly, I've considered hunting down an old Shogun Megazord just because it feels incomplete to not have it. I'd have to hunt down a compatible Falcon Zord with it though. Now for a closer look at the lighting collection figures. First, I have everything that's related to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the 30th Anniversary Remastered Team, the Ninjetti Rangers that keep displayed to be more like the movie, the Metallic Armor Team, Alien Rangers, and the Boom Comics teams like the Omega Rangers, Ninja Turtles as Rangers, plus a couple of the Street Fighter Rangers. I still need to hunt down Ru and Chun-Li. The next shelf down is all villains, but is similarly split between the actual Mighty Morphin show characters, and then the Boom Comics original characters like Lord Drachnan and Shredder as the evil Green Ranger. Honestly, that's probably my favorite figure to come out of the comics lineup. After that, I start getting to the later teams like Zeo, Turbo, which I still need to get that Red Ranger, In Space, Lost Galaxy, and the Psycho Rangers. My bottom shelf then gets into Time Force, Wild Force, Dino Thunder, SPD, Dino Charge, Beast Morphers, and Dino Fury. I also still need to get the last few releases for those teams as well, even though most will likely never be complete, since Hasbro licensed out the toy rights too. Playmates. My last bit of Hasbro is the Ghostbusters Plasma series and the Star Wars Black series. I did end up getting most of the Ghostbusters figures, with the only real exception being the Comic-Con exclusives. For Star Wars though, it's pretty low on my priority list, so I don't really have much. I really only collect them on big discount and clearance sales. I'm really only interested in Jedi and Sith characters. 
uh, some of them. I might not even really know just because I'm not really that deep into the lore beyond the feature films, but if it looks cool and has a light suburb, it could eventually end up on my shelf. Jumping over to Mattel now. The only fandom I really collect with them now is WWE. Uh, for my displays, they're mostly grouped by era. The first shelf is the 70s and 80 seconds golden era on the next level up. I have the 90s new generation era along with, of course, uh, the attitude era. Next to that is the early 2000s ruthless aggression era. Then, with all the newer lines currently running, like the Target exclusive Legends series and the Walmart exclusive Monday Night Wars series, I felt it was best to mostly give WCW its own section. Notably absent from most of those was Hulk Hogan. This is because I recently decided to give him his own little space. Above that, I have the more modern wrestlers from the 2010s up to now. With a little bit of a EW sprinkled in, it's a little outdated in this photo, because I set this up just before SummerSlam, then. Of course, at the very top is my Undertaker and Kane display. I'm still trying to get my hands on the Attitude Era. Kane Ultimate Edition that was packaged with the Raya's War Ring via Mattel Creations. Because of the constant updates, this display is probably what changes the most in the entirety of my collection. I'm always after the newest characters, along with the newest versions of older characters. Moving on to McFarlane Toys, most of that collection now is all related to the DC Multiverse lines. Starting on my bottom shelves and working my way up, this first shelf is all of my comic-inspired figures related to Superman, both heroes and villains. The next shelf is also comic-inspired, but it's a combination of Batman and Lantern characters. I'll eventually have to split this up one way or another. The next half-step up is my Batman movie figures. The big six-pack from last year led me to setting this display up, but the only figure I actually have from that back is the Val Kilmer Batman. The sonar suit from Forever is my all-time favorite. I do have the 89 Keaton Batmobile in the background, along with a few bat cycles like the bat pod that included Catwoman. On my second tiers, I have all of my video game-related figures. First up is the Arkham Universe characters. Personally, I think these are some of the best overall versions for many of these characters, especially Catwoman. For me, this is easily her definitive figure. The next shelf is for the Injustice games. Granted, this has a bit more of a mixture than other shelves, because characters like Starfire and Swamp Thing are really the comic book-inspired counterparts. But to me, they're close enough to the Injustice appearances to count for that. Also, the figures like Darkseid and Doomsday are really made by Storm Collectibles, but they scale well enough with McFarlane to keep them all together. Further up on my third tier, I have the Snyderverse movie figures. With the TV show Green Arrow and The Flash sprinkled in, this shelf is primarily the heroes. And the next shelf is primarily the villains along with the Suicide Squad. It'll be interesting to see how all of this compares to James Gunn's new universe of films. Finally, at the very top of this entertainment center, I have my Superman-centric shelf. Granted, while most of this is indeed from McFarlane Toys, there are figures still sprinkled in from other manufacturers, like the Hot Toys Henry Cavill. Mezco Christopher Reeve, and the DC Direct Smallville Tom Welling. During the process of making this video, I did add in a few figures to the collection. I finally got my hands on the comic-inspired Wonder Woman, and then also found the platinum version of the Teen Titans Connor Kent Superboy. I still want the regular edition as well. I also got the Black Cowl Nightfall Batman and Cyborg Superman. Before I totally leave away from McFarland, though, I do still have most of my old collection based on the Matrix, along with the Headless Horseman from Sleepy Hollow and Spawn himself from the Mortal Kombat 11 video game. Next on my collection list is NECA. They easily have the widest variety of characters in my collection, ranging from Aliens, Predator, Robocop, Terminator, lots of horror characters, and of course, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. For the Turtles, almost all movie figures, Wild did own the set from the original 1990 movie. I ended up switching to the secret of the ooze figures where I could. I didn't think I'd actually want the TMNT3 figures, but once I saw them in person, I had to go ahead and add them to my collection as well. Of course, this collection would not be complete without Super Shredder, along with Taka and Razer. I was hoping to have Tatsu by the time I put this video out, but I have not found him yet. As I stated before, my NECA collection extends far beyond Ninja Turtles, featuring characters from all sorts of horror and science fiction franchises, starting at the top of this shelf. I have my alien xenomorphs, then my predators, followed by Terminator, which also has some of the old McFarlane Toys Terminator 3 figures sprinkled in. Below that I have Robocop, then several horror characters like Freddy, Jason, Michael, and Jigsaw. Then the final shelf is Back to the Future and ALF. My favorite BT film is Part 2, so that's the main figures I want. I still need to get Griff to finish it off. The final manufacturer on my collection list is Storm Collectibles. From them, my main lines are Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and Tekken. Although, it seems like Tekken has been a bit forgotten this year. With Mortal Kombat, I did start with the MK1 and 2 Ninja figures, but because of the quality control issues those had, 
I sold them off once we started getting the M. K3 versions because they are so much better in quality. I am a bit saddened that the line has ended because we were well on our way to having a very strong roster of figures based on the original Mortal Kombat Trilogy era. For Street Fighter, I'm mostly only collecting the SF2 line. With the exception of Akuma, I got him because of his appearance. In Tekken 7, to me, Storm does put out the overall highest quality figures, but they seem to be quickly dropping out of the lines that I actually care to collect. Before I wrap this video up, I want to touch on the other collectibles part that I always mention in my intro, but rarely post full videos about. Since this is mostly an action figure channel, granted, I would not want to collect said action figures without also enjoying the comic books. Movies, video games, and other mediums about those characters. Starting with comic books nowadays, I primarily focus on trade paperbacks or collected editions of my favorite stories. As new stories are created, I'll look up reviews and other information about them, but then I'll wait for the collected editions to actually make a purchase. I don't like to have books that come in multiple volumes in most cases. Instead, I would prefer a 100% complete story from beginning to end all in one book. Some stories are too big to really make that happen, so I have a few that break that rule. Of course, most of my favorites are centered on Superman himself, but I'm no stranger to Batman either. Most of my absolute favorite stories, however, tend to include the entire Justice League, if not the entire DC Universe as a whole. It doesn't just stop there, though. The best way to get my attention is through crossovers with other universes that you'll likely never see any other way. DC vs. Marvel, Batman vs. Ninja Turtles, Justice League vs. Power Rangers, all that sort of stuff. Some of the coolest stuff has come out of crossover stories that never would have been possible any other way. There has actually been an animated film based on Batman vs. Ninja Turtles, so who knows what might be possible in the future. Next up is my movie and TV collection. Of what I own, it's in the best format available. Whether that is DVD, Blu-ray disc, or for K-Ultra High Definition, up first is everything related to Power Rangers, plus some odds and ends. Next up, I have everything related to DC and Marvel Comics. When it comes to movies, I primarily focus on getting the Steelbook editions. That is pretty much the only way I'll buy something nowadays, with very few exceptions. Lastly, I have the rest of my collection, from the Adams Family all the way to World War Z and everything in between. I actually do still have some of my old music CDs, most of which are soundtracks, back when I was a teenager in the 90s. My favorite way to find new music was through movie soundtracks, mostly because my local radio stations barely played anything except country, rap, and pop music so much at the time. The soundtracks for Mortal Kombat, Batman Forever. The Matrix and WWE were always in rotation for me. The final part of my collection is my 118 scale cars, mostly based on Knight Rider, the original series. Kit and car are the Hot Wheels, elite versions. The scanner lights do work, but I need new batteries for them. Then, the 2008 versions of them are really just generic Mustang Cobras from the time, but I paint in their scanners. So what do you guys have in your collections? Do we have a lot of common items, or is yours completely different from mine? Let me know in the comments below.